escape plan. Leave the rat race in the dust. Vep. Vep chapter 39. Just for the ladies, hygiene and security. Vep covers female-specific van-dwelling issues. Since these details are beyond my personal realm of expertise, I consoled with female van and RV dwellers regarding feminine hygiene and bathroom needs on the road, as well as security issues as a solo traveling female. They offer their collective tips and observations here, under the pen name Rita Vep. Restrooms and security information that is pertinent to both females and males is in the following sections. Restrooms and showers, getting it done in a van. Restrooms and showers, showering and bathing. Restrooms and showers, public utilities and gyms, and security and physical safety. Rita Vep writes, Restrooms and urine diverters. As a female van dweller of several years, I am still particular with my restroom requirements. I prefer to sit down to urinate each and every time. Most of us women are used to the squatting or the hovering technique that we've adopted to avoid touching the yucky toilet seat. The female urinary diversion device allows you to urinate discreetly while standing up or leaning back. You can urinate with minimal undressing. Just unbutton your pants. I have used a female urine diverter device in places you don't want your rear end to go near, such as portable stall toilets and sketchy, crowded places the general public frequents. I'm looking at you, convenience stores. In a pinch, the female diverter will definitely do, but without practice, it can get messy. I would try to practice your standing up pee technique in the shower at first. After a few tries privately, you should be confident enough to perform the practice in a public restroom or even in the woods without the worry about getting yourself soaked. Regardless, I always, always have wet wipes on hand for all of my hygiene needs. Menstruation. For women who have their monthly cycle, I highly suggest using a menstrual cup. These are silicone devices in the shape of a small bell that are flexible and easy to insert into the vagina to catch and store the blood. Once removed and contents discarded, the cup can be washed and sterilized, according to manufacturers' suggested instructions. Boiling water is typically all that is needed on a weekly basis, but a soap and water wash daily is sufficient. For bear and wildlife safety, please remember to discard of your used tampons and pads securely. Treat used feminine hygiene products with the same care that you would with food. Keep out of reach and, if possible, in a sealed container. Hair care. Before I hit the road, I had my hair cut above my shoulders. Many van-dwelling females have long hair, and kudos to them for maintaining lovely locks. However, I have found in my years of traveling the country in a van, showers are few and far between, and very rarely free of charge. So, to make things easier... Find a hair routine early on that works for your hair type and length. My hair is short and very fine. I've been able to go a couple of weeks without a proper shower by just washing my hair in my shoebox-sized sink, and elsewhere using wipes or a wet rag and soap. Even washing short hair requires a lot of water, so get ready for some bad hair days and get your cute hats ready. Dry shampoo has been a savior to me when I am running low on water. Regardless of workable solutions, messy hair is just a fact of life on the road. There are some trade-offs in the VEP lifestyle, and having amazing hair is just one of them. Trust me, it is a small price to pay for the amazing sights you will see in and out of your van. To save money and time, I know of some natural gals that have gone the no-poo method. This simply means they do not carry shampoo nor conditioner, and instead use a mix of baking soda and water to clean the scalp and hair. Then finish with an apple cider vinegar diluted mix for their conditioner. I have tried this and must say that the vinegar is amazing as a conditioner. However, removing all the sulfite buildup and residue from commercial shampoos and styling products takes weeks, sometimes months, and most women I know can't be seen with hair that is the result of this in-between process. However, in the long run, this method can save you lots of money in hair care products and save you gallons of water as you will not need to wash your hair as often. General hygiene. One of the other hygiene issues that I had to get over was not being able to wash my hands with soap and warm water each time I finished in the restroom. I love the soap and unlimited hot water in public restrooms when available, but when in your van, that is neither practical nor realistic. Ladies, if you are germaphobes, this will be either one of those things you will have to sacrifice 
or you will just eventually get over it. Time will only tell. Just be prepared for dirty hands and fingernails, as no amount of hand sanitizer or wipes will ever replace the cleaning power of good old-fashioned soap and warm water. Here's my last tip to stay fresh and clean. Put a few drops of your favorite essential oil in an empty spray bottle and fill it with water. You may substitute the water with my favorite skin cleanser of all times, witch hazel. This is a perfect midday mist for keeping armpits, underbreasts, and below the waist nice and fresh. Please be careful using essential oils around sensitive lady parts. Always dilute and follow suggestions of use on the bottle of your oil. Security. The same information in security and physical safety applies to both men and women. Some additional tips for the ladies include avoid making van or RV look girly. As much as women may love pink or otherwise feminine bumper stickers, girly knickknacks hanging from the rearview mirror or other feminine touches applied to the exterior of their vans and RVs, this screams solo female traveler. It may be wise to save the girly stuff for the camper's interior and keep the exterior nondescript. Travel with a dog. Cats are great, but dogs offer the distinct benefit of alerting you to the presence of intruders. A big dog can protect you if the situation gets hairy, but even a chihuahua can be a great alarm to alert you if someone or something is skulking around your van. Women without dogs who want to enjoy some dog benefit can try a tip from Prius car camper Sue Ann, sueannonline.blogspot.com. She suggests leaving a large dog bowl and chain outside your camper to make passerby think there is a large dog accompanying you. My boyfriend is out hiking. Ladies, we all know this trick. If an unpleasant or sketchy person approaches you, be assertive and say, my boyfriend is coming back soon. Some solo female travelers go as far as setting out an extra camp chair to make casual passerby think they are not camping alone. Camouflage As longtime van dweller Bob Wells, owner of the great online resource CheapRBLiving.com, calls it, can work great for women on the road. Similar to Sue Ann's dog bowl chain idea and my camping chair suggestion above, Bob recommends women consider leaving a large pair of men's shoes or a two-person tent in their campsite to suggest they are not camping alone. As always, drive away if you sense danger. Beep. All contents copyright William Burson 2020. All rights reserved. No part of this book may be copied, shared, distributed, or transmitted in any way.